Uh, welcome everyone, and also welcome your uh, very special guest today uh, to tell us about innovations in ODK. Um, so my name is Zhao Ku. I'm I'm a researcher at IPRI International Food Policy Research Institute based in Washington, D.C., one of the CGIAR International Research Center. And I will be presenting, I'll be moderating this webinar together with my colleague, uh, uh, Daniel Jimenez, uh, who is coordinating data-driven agronomy community of practice. Um, yeah, and so you, you are already here, so I trust you already know what ODK is and you know what it does and things like that. So. So not wasting any of your time on ODK itself, uh, I'd like to, okay, we'll wait this thing. Yeah, <laughs> present, uh, start this webinar by giving you this. Um, so you are in the right seminar, right webinar, uh, but so the, the reason, so this was inspired by one of the meeting I went last year. Uh, it was a conference organized by this wonderful organization called We Robotics, uh, which promote the use of drones uh, in humanitarian and, and social good activities. And this was their first slide when they started conference uh, last year. And the, the, so yeah, hear me out. So there are two different kind of universes of science fiction out there. Right? The one is Star Wars, one is Star Trek. In Star Trek world, uh, if you are familiar or, or not, uh, everything works. Uh, everything is so super slick and polished. Um, you know, people just know how to use stuff and just be there and you know, just beam me up kind of thing. Yeah, everything looks fantastic. Uh, people don't have to worry too much about technology itself. Just, just they do stuff. In Star Wars uh, universe, on the other hand, yeah, nothing seemed to work at, at the beginning. It's just, the duct tape everywhere, it's quite clunky at the beginning, but I mean, our main characters go through a lot of journey and adventures to get things to work. And at the end, everyone really worked together to, you know, to create something beautiful. And yeah, to me, ODK has been something like that. It's not just a software product that you can download and use right away. It's something you participate and create and really collaborate together to develop something to work in your application and study. So yeah, I, I've been really admiring your work and ODK's work, and I'm really happy to have this opportunity to, um, yeah, to talk about this together. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, I will let Daniel to uh, give his opening remark. <laughs> Daniel. Yeah. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm, I'm Daniel Jimenez. I'm the leader of the community of practice on, on data-driven agronomy. So Yahoo and I, we're both pleased to see you all attending and, and just to remind that, to remind to all of you that these communities of practice are part of the CGIR platform for big data in agriculture, which uh, works to harness the capabilities of big data to solve agricultural development problems faster, better, and a greater scale. And as we used to say, like feed in the world in the future bite to bite. Mm -hmm. So one of the main goals of these communities of practice are, is to facilitate and community, communicate collective action on a particular topic across the CGIR and, and working together with its partners. So, and that's precisely what we want to do here today with, with, with this webinar, right? So we're bringing uh, Yo Anokwa, the co-founder and CEO of ODK. Right, he has a PhD in computer science from the University of Washington, and now we are in this Star Wars mood. I mean, Yo Anokwa is kind of the Jedi behind the Open Data Kit, right? He was just telling the story that they started like in 2009. Come on, and even not even Android was born at that time. So it's an honor to have Yo with us today. And and come on, I mean, let's be honest. How many of us haven't tried at least two or three tools to collect data in the developing world over the last 10 years? Well, I have. And we all ended up using ODK, right? Just in the um, Alliance here at Biodiversity, as you can see on the slide, we use it, for instance, to collect uh, socioeconomic and crop management data for rice across Latin America uh, through um, one uh, uh, growers association. Like it's the, as far as I know, it's the only continent-wide growers association called uh, the Latin American Fund for Irrigated Rice. And we also use it uh, as part of the of CLIMOF platform. We use it to help farmers to identify resilient and locally adaptive crop varieties, but also scientists use it to implement massive on-farm trials using mobile data collection. And across the CGIR, you can see many examples on initiatives that programs that count on ODK as the standard 
to or the official tool to collect data in the regions we work in the developing world. So I'm happy as, as all of you and as Yahoo to have you today with us because if in the big data platform we talk about solving agricultural problems and the faster, better and greater scale, well, today we will hear about it from, from, from Yo. So Yo will walk us through the evolution and the future of ODK. And as far as the community of practice on data-driven agronomy is concerned, it connects very well with the topic of this year on scaling digital innovations and the topic of the next year, which is the extension officers of the future, as ODK should be part of the tools, knowledge, and skills that the extension officers might have in the future in the field. So let's get started and I hand over to, to, to you right now. No, actually, uh, me, Yahoo, me first, Yahoo, yeah. Uh, because yeah, for, from our geospatial community of practice, I also wanted to show some examples. Uh, so our champion within our community, our ODK champion is Mohamed Ahmed. Actually, I see Mohamed's name here in the participants. So uh, welcome, Mohamed. Uh, so uh, this is the one uh, one of the apps that the ICRAF Center, the World Agroforestry Center based in Nairobi, have been developing called Africa Tree Finder. Uh, the farmers can enter their location of the plot and their agrochromatic information and what kind of tree will work best uh, in their field uh, in, uh, together with agriculture. Um, and, and the three more papers recently came out. Um, they're working in all very different disciplines in agriculture, uh, completely relying on uh, ODK to collect data, one on socioeconomic data, um, and one on uh, maize farming systems uh, from our colleagues at CIMIT, and another one from IIT, another colleague of ours uh, based in Nigeria, uh, collecting ODK for YAM. Uh, farming system information. So, I mean, there are lots of these examples that, uh, yeah, I can't imagine how we could have collected all this data from the ground uh, using agricultural research uh, without OTK. So, yeah, we are really happy and, yeah, yeah as da Daniel said, honored to have this opportunity. Okay, great. So, that's, that's all for our inter quick introduction. And I will let uh, you all to share your screen and show us what's, what's new. Great. Uh, thanks so much for the for the warm introduction. Uh, let me see if I can get uh, my my screen working here for everybody. Uh, doo -doo -doo. We'll get presenter view up. All right. Can everybody confirm? At least can somebody confirm that you, you can see my screen? Yes. Yeah, we can see your screen. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Yao. I'm really honored to be here. Um, I am the co-founder and CEO uh, of a little project called ODK. I helped to start the project in, in late 2008, um, and I've been working on it every day uh, since. And I know that that probably sounds miserable, uh, but <laughs> I must say that it continues to be a joy and a privilege to lead the project. Um, and part of what makes it great is that I get to spend so much time um, uh, giving these kinds of talks. So in, in today's presentation, I wanna talk just a little bit about what ODK is, uh, share a bit about the project's impact, uh, show a demo, a live demo of our latest features, and then leave plenty of room for uh, Q&A. Um, I just wanna be able to answer some of your, your questions. So, um, oh, this is my contact information at the bottom. Please email me if you have any questions or concerns. Um, I'm always available uh, on email. So some of you already know what ODK is, but for those who don't, um, ODK lets you build powerful offline forms to collect the data you need wherever it is. It's data collection software that's designed to work really well offline. And we make ODK for everybody, um, but our, our focus is on social impact and empowering those who are making positive change. Uh, because of this mission, ODK is open source software and it's built in a community-oriented way that enables organizations to take some ownership of the platform. So just as an example, we have more than 14,000 uh, 14, people on our forums um, who participate in our community and, and help us make um, ODK what it is. Why should somebody use ODK? Well, we think ODK has become the standard for mobile data collection for millions of people because it works well. Um, you can build forms that include photos or calculations, skip logic and repeating elements, but you can also play videos. You can send SMSs, you can collect GPS traces. And I'll show you some of that in the demo. Uh, you can collect the data with a mobile app, which a lot of people use ODK Collect or on the web app with our web forms. And again, both the mobile app and the web app work great offline. 
And once you've collected your data, you can connect tools like Excel or Power BI or R directly to ODK server, our new server, so you can quickly build your dashboards and reports. And again, I'll show you an example of this in a little bit. Um, ODK is regularly used to collect millions of submissions in agriculture and in pretty much every sector that you've heard of. Um, and if it doesn't do exactly what you need it to do, you can extend it um, or try a compatible alternative. So that's, to me, is the power of ODK. That's the power of, of open source. I want to highlight a few examples of ODK projects, particularly at scale, um, before we jump into, into the demo. So just a few months ago, uh, Nigeria deployed 70,000 data collectors to map, document uh, 2 million smallholder farmers with ODK. Um, in the health space, uh, WHO, the World Health Organization, uses ODK for, for much of its disease surveillance. It's a leading tool um, for COVID-19 response in low and middle income countries. Uh, folks like the Red Cross use ODK for their m and &E, their monitoring and evaluation. The Jane Goodall Institute uses ODK for their uh, tracking ape habitat. Uh, in Honduras, there's been about, I think, 80,000 teachers who use ODK for tracking the educational progress of 2 million students. Uh, and then finally, one of my favorites, the Carter Center uses ODK for election monitoring. I don't know if you've been following the news, but we've had elections here in the U.S., and there's definitely a need for, for some monitoring. Um, so those are some of the examples of ODK in use. And you can see that although there's a lot of use in agriculture and health, it really is sort of a, a cross-platform a cross platform, um, tool. So that's sort of my, my pitch for now. I want to jump into the demo um, and show you some of the, the new features, um, um, some of the, the new features of, of ODK. Now, uh, for the demo I'm going to show you, um, I'm just going to show you some wild stuff that you can do with ODK. Um, I want to stress that this is a live demo. Um, none of this is canned. And I, I do live demos because, you know, I have a lot of confidence in the software that we ship, um, that it does what it says it does, um, and it does so reliably. And this is really important for me because, you know, the folks who use ODK, whether for agriculture or healthcare, they really need it to work and they need to get work once. Um, for example, in the polio context, you know, we have folks who are out collecting data in Afghanistan uh, in Taliban controlled territory where they have a very small window of time to go do the data collection. Uh, and the software just has to work. Um, there are no do overs or second options. So I always try to do live demos because the stuff has to work and we have to be confident um, that it does. So I'm going to see if I, I can pause the, the deck here and move to my lovely emulator. Okay, and so that should be working. Um, so this is the latest uh, build of ODK Collect. And actually, let me check the chat here to make sure. Um, I hope it's still working. <laughs> uh, let me check the chat here. Yeah, all right. Yeah, great. it looks. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so this is ODK Collect, our mobile client. Um, and what I'm going to show you is uh, sort of how um, some of the, the new widgets and, and stuff that we have. So the way that um, ODK Collect is, is configured, in the old days, you used to sort of um, type in a username and password, but that's, you know, that's old hat now. We have this new uh, barcode scanning functionality where um, you configure uh, the form on the server and then you scan a barcode on your phone and that's what configures the device here. It's hard to do in an emulator, um, uh, but that's how the device gets set up is that you just sort of scan the barcode. Um, so I've scanned the barcode here and that's what you're looking at uh, here. I wanna fill out a form. Um, and I, I built a custom form uh, for uh, for the uh, CGA AIR, uh, big data. Um, so this form, if you, you can notice uh, when I launched it, it put, pop up this dialog that says this form tracks your location. So that's the first feature I want to show you is that ODK has an audit feature now where um, as the data collector is navigating through the form, we're actually recording all the changes that they're making, whether or not they add a question, they remove a question, uh, they change an answer, where in the GPS coordinates of where those, those, those changes are being made. So in the background, you can turn on auditing uh, to see what your data collectors are doing and making sure that they're doing sort of the right things and that they're well trained. Um, I'm going to fill out that my name is, is Yao. Uh, you can swipe, you can hit the next button um, 
where am I? I'm going to just collect a simple GPS coordinate. It's not that important. Um, you notice that uh, we can toggle languages, right? So ODK is, is multilingual. Your forms can have any language. So if you see, speak Swahili, you see that the, the language has been toggled here. If you change the language to something like Hindi, um, the language can be toggled. So you can put whatever languages that you want in the form and customize it as you, you see fit. Um, I'm going to change back to English because my Swahili and Hindi are not, not very good. Um, you notice that if I change my answer here uh, to Daniel and I swipe, it changes the, the name of the, of the person here. So that is questions that you've, you've previously answered can be fed into um, uh, 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 new questions so you can build a more custom form. Um, a lot of people use ODK to collect pictures and videos, but I want to show you that you can also use it to play videos. So for example, um, one use case that we see is, well, I want to watch training videos before I start the data collection. So yes, you can say you want to watch the video and notice that the question pops up here. If I say no, I don't see it. If I say yes, it, it live updates. Um, I want to watch a, um, I want to watch a Maradona video. And so here is the video from the, the famous hand of God video. Um, from Maradona's um, uh, goal against uh, England. So you can watch whatever videos that you want. Here's one on, on crop modeling from a recent um, presentation that you folks did. Um, so all these videos are embedded in the form and they work offline. Um, if I say then I want to rate the video, I say that video was pretty good and I can go on to the next question. Um, so that should give you an example of, again, using data from a previous question, playing a video, I showed you multiple questions per screen, toggling language. Um, oftentimes in, in agriculture, you want to do more than collect a point, you want to collect a shape. Um, so we have a, a geo shape, a, a geo shape option here. Um, I'm going to see if I can navigate to sort of where I am. Um, we'll zoom in a little bit here uh, into San Diego. You can see that I am very close uh, here. And you can collect the traces in any number of ways. When I hit this plus button, you can place it by just tapping on the points on the screen, um, or you can also do it uh, automatically. So one use case that we see is like, I, well, I wanna walk around the plot and I wanna take points every 20 seconds and I require an accuracy of you know, three meters. So all that is customizable um, within the application. For the emulator, we're sort of limited in what we can do. So I'm gonna place it by tapping and I'm going to just, I don't know, put some points down here. This is a very large area. You probably don't want to do this, but um, um, so I, I've recorded my points. You can sort of see the points here. Uh, the thing that's really cool now in that in our form design language, um, you can measure the size of the plot. So this is being calculated. It takes into account your GPS coordinates, the shape of the earth, um, and that number is, is being live updated. So for example, um, if I throw away this point and I, I, I zoom in closer to um, where I am and I do a, a smaller point in the San Diego um, uh, parking lot, the San Diego Zoo uh, parking lot here, um, you see that I have fewer points and indeed that plot size has changed. So we're dynamically calculating the plot. So you can do all sorts of math on the data that you collect. Um, notice that this is colored, that's by design. You can have your form uh, show individual elements or, or different colors. Um, as part of your, your form design, that's up to you. Um, I wanna show you a hot new feature that we just shipped, which is audio recording. So now we're collecting farmer information. Well, sometimes you wanna record part of the form uh, to make sure that the data collector is asking the right questions or you're gathering sort of richer context about um, the data that you're collecting. So in this case, I can just hit record sound. Oh, hold on, I need to change this, this setting here. Um, this is a new version. So um, do, 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 uh, give me just a second. We'll use our native sound recording. Uh, let me go back here. Do, do, do. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Well, I told you it was a live demo. This is our, our newest beta. Okay, there we go. Um, so we are sort of recording um, the interview now as I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. Um, and so it's being recorded in the background. So we can ask the farmer's name. Let's say the farmer's name is Susan. Uh, let's say the farmer's name is um, one, two, three, uh, phone number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The farmer lives in um, Chula Vista, which is a neighborhood here. 
Uh, the primary crop that the farmer is farming, um, we have a long list of crops here. So you can auto complete, let's say the farmer is, is, is farming potatoes and we can select potatoes. Um, if I try to go to the next screen, it won't let me because I'm recording in the screen. So I really want to sort of stop the recording. Um, and so now I have an audio recording of just this section that's associated with this. I have the farmer's name, the farmer's phone number, um, some information there. I can now go to the next screen. Um, and you notice that we collected the farmer's name and phone number. Why would we do that? Well, uh, sometimes you want to send a text message uh, to the farmer after the, the data collection is done. So we've collected actually that farmer's information. I'm going to hit launch here. Um, and if all goes well, notice that it's generated a text message, one, two, three, four, five, to the, the farmer's phone number, and it's put a custom message um, with a little farmer icon. Thanks for participating, Susan. And Susan's the name of the farmer that we um, uh, we entered. So you can launch external applications from ODK, inject it with information, and do sort of exciting things with it. Um, I'm going to go back here and say, like, you notice that the form has been saved as Susan. I'm going to go ahead and save Susan's form. The form has been saved. It's now local to the device. It hasn't been sent up to the server. Um, if I go back and I fill the blank form again, um, uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I, I can't see it. But uh, forms that are filled will show up here as icons. Um, and so you can sort of see uh, previous forms. And I'll try to give you an example of that. Um, here's, you can go back and you obviously you can, you can edit all that information. Um, I forgot to enter my name as the, as the, the person who was filling out the form. So I will do that and I'll, I'll save that change. Um, once I've entered some data, I can actually use that data to, uh, to preload other forms. So for example, if I keep filling out this form here, you notice that it knows that now my name is Yao. And that was not the case previously. And the way, the reason for that is that, um, you can put certain, uh, variables uh, 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 and record the history of those variables. So if, for example, I say my name is now Bob and I'll, I'll save this form, I'll go back, um, I'll fill out a new form. It sort of remembers that my name is Bob, but it doesn't remember where I am. Um, so you can have this sort of last save feature where um, as we're going through the form, it's remembering things about the things that you've entered uh, previously to save you sort of um, a lot of time. So anyway, I've, I've showed you some of the, the core functionality. Let me just send this form with food, Susan, that I I, um, I filled in. Uh, it's been sent off to the server, which is great. Um, now I'm gonna hide this out of the way here. We'll hide this so you don't, you can't see it. And we're gonna go back here um, to the server. Uh, this is our new server, uh, it's called ODK Central. We stopped active work on um, aggregate, which is our old server, because it's just too hard to maintain. Um, and we now have this new server called uh, Central. It has support for projects, like you can group forms and users together. You can fill out forms within a web browser within the, the, uh, the server. You can make any changes to the form. You can add or remove questions, and the server handles all those changes and sends it off to, um, to the phone. And you can also visualize your data um, uh, in, in Power BI. I'll just show you some of that. So we go into submissions here. You see that this is the, the form that I just I just filled out right now. You can see that my name was Yao. The farmer's name was, was Susan. The audio recording that I have is sort of here. And all that data is, is now available. Um, I can download that data as a CSV. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and download that and show that to you. Um, and obviously, people have seen CSVs before. Um, so there's nothing really exciting there. But what I want to show you is that um, the CSV has a ton more information now. And I'm opening it up right now to show um, everybody. You know, the, the CSV has the same old boring information that I entered. You know, the, the enumeration name is Yao, et cetera. Um, but there's also an associated uh, CSV with the audit information. So here's all the audit information of me navigating through that particular form the start time and end times of when I entered particular sections of the form, um, the latitudes and longitudes are, are stored. You know, like I changed the enumerator name at some point and all that information is there along with my GPS coordinates. So it's a really cool sort of audit feature here um, that we've added to, to ODK. I'm gonna pause there. Um, I wanna show you just like another form to give you a sense of what you can do. Uh, here's my farmer registration form. Um, 
uh, with ODK new server ODK central, like I said, you can enter the data on the on the server. Um, so here I have a bunch of submissions. If I want to make a new submission, I just click uh, new, and this launches it in the web browser. And the same sort of translations and, and whatever work on, on the server. Um, and so you can enter forms within the web browser. So you can think of this as sort of a survey monkey functionality. These forms don't need to have user accounts. So you can actually just take this form, share the links out on WhatsApp or whatever, and have millions of people fill out data um, within the web form without having to download ODK Collect and, and, and use it. So that should give you an example of, of that functionality. Um, I had mentioned that you know you have some data here. You can always download as a CSV, but we have this new button called uh, the OData feed. So I'm going to click that um, and notice that it gives you a really long link. You can pop this link in Excel or Power BI and use it for visualization. So if I copy and paste this link into Power BI, um, um, you can do really cool things like build these live dashboards. So here's an example um, of, 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 of the same farmer um, registration form, but with a dashboard built in Power BI. And this is a live updating dashboard. Power BI is talking directly to the server and pulling in submissions um, as they, uh, they come. So for example, this is a pie graph of the different primary cops that people are doing. You obviously can also visualize that information on a map. So here's an example of the world famous San Diego Zoo's parking lot. And again, each of these blue points is a submission and I'm building sort of custom uh, uh, maps um, uh, with a visualization. Um, so I want to be respectful of everybody's time here. Um, that should give you a sense of what some of the new things um, are in ODK. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, again, um, just as a quick summary, I've shown you, you can use a barcode to configure the device. You can use data from a previous question. You can play video as part of the form. You can have multiple questions per screen. You can change languages into any language you want. You can measure a plot. You can calculate the area of a plot. You can style your text in different colors. You can record audio as part of the form filling process. You can send text messages um, that are custom made based on the, on the data that you've entered. You can obviously send submissions and that's all automated. Um, you can save the the last values that you've, you've entered to save your data collectors from trouble. You can view previous submissions on a map locally. You can even add offline layers to those, those maps that you see locally. You can download the data, certainly. Um, you can view audits. Um, and then on the server side, we now have projects and grouping support, which we didn't have in aggregate. You can preview and submit forms within the web interface. You can make any changes to the form. You can add or remove questions and the server will sort it out and send it to the mobile devices. And then finally, you can visualize your data um, with R or Power BI. So that sort of concludes the live demo section. Um, I know that was really fast. Um, let me switch here to my slides and try to, um, try to wrap things up. Um, the question that we get, you know, usually after a demo is, well, that sounds great. Um, I've used ODK before. Is ODK free? I know ODK has been going through a lot of changes. Um, and so um, what I would say is that uh, ODK is open source software. Um, it's free in the sense that uh, it's, it's freedom. You will always be able to use and modify ODK for free. Um, because that's the license. ODK is not free as in no cost. It really it requires resources, you know, phones and servers to use. And on our end, it requires resources and quite a lot of them uh, to make. Uh, it requires designers and developers and testers uh, to make ODK. Um, over the last 12 years, we've, we've been able to find grant funding to sort of support our small team, but it's become harder and harder to run the project this way. And that is despite having millions of users, we were always a few months away from running out of money. Um, so last year, we really committed to try to solve the resources problem once and for all. Our goals were to dramatically reduce the work that's required for organizations to use ODK and deploy it, but also generate enough revenue uh, for us to ensure the, the financial sustainability of the project. Um, last month, we launched our solution and uh, it's called ODK Cloud. And I wanna talk a little bit about that. So. Uh, ODK Cloud is the easiest way to use ODK. It's the same ODK that you self-host, the same server that I showed you, ODK Central, um, but we do all the hard work for you. We provide fast servers, regular uh, updates, daily backups, uptime guarantees, enterprise-grade security, and importantly, guaranteed support from the ODK team on any issues that you have. 
Um, and so if you use ODK Cloud, you are directly supporting the future development and maintenance of ODK and making it better for everyone. And I can't stress this enough, is that the only way that we can continue to make ODK um, is if enough people sort of choose to, to use our cloud hosting. Now, um, we do understand that uh, not everyone has the budget uh, for cloud hosting. Uh, so if you can't afford ODK Cloud, there's good news. There's always great news with ODK. Um, ODK is and always will be 100% open source. So you can always self-host it uh, and rely on our amazing volunteers on the community forum for help. We, as always, provide a ton of documentation on how you can, you can self-host, the minimum requirements uh, that are required, and we'll work really hard to make sure that those who can't afford ODK, as always, will be able to uh, run it on their own infrastructure. So I'm going to pause here and, and see if there, are, uh, if there are any questions. Awesome. Yeah, th thanks a lot for the presentation demo. Yeah, everything worked great. Um, so we have, yeah, in fact, lots of questions uh, while you're awesome. uh, speaking. <laughs> okay, uh, Daniel, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and thank you. All. I mean, like many things that we were not aware of, you know, in terms of ODK. Uh, I mean, you walked us through this visualization, audio messages, autom auto automation of many things that we, we didn't know. So thank you for that. I mean, we have, I have a question that I, I mean, just people keep keep talking about this and it's, it's more like a, to hear about if, if is there any possibility of seeing the, that the information that is being partially uploaded without waiting waiting until the survey is complete, like kind of a partial sync of queries. Like uh, sometimes we cannot follow the process of collecting data as, as we we have to wait until until the process is, is complete. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's not something that we, we get a lot of requests from our side on, um, but this notion of um, uh, a partial uh, submission as you're filling out the form, I think is challenging mostly because ODK is sort of designed to work offline. And so um, if we're sending stuff sort of back and forth uh, whilst the data is, is being collected, it, it becomes a challenge. What I would say, and this is for every feature request, is that if there's something that's important to you, hop onto our forum, introduce yourself, write a feature request, and try to make the case for why we should do that. And you will find that someone on our team, usually Ellen, will jump in, will try to figure out what core problem you're trying to solve and try to put the resources together to add it. The bottom line for me is that if there are enough people who are using ODK who want a feature, we will build it. You know, we're committed to doing that. Good. Thank you. Yeah, who do we have? Yeah, uh, yeah. Another common question keeps coming up. Um, I, I, I kind of see the answer already, but um, <laughs> is there any plan to port ODK on iPhone and iOS? IPhone. Uh, that's a, a great question. Um, usually when I, 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 I get this question, it's from folks who live in the U.S. who want to review the survey. They're not out on the field. The reality is that um, so ODK currently runs on 13,000 different Android devices. Um, and to do that, we've written a ton of code. So I think on the mobile side, ODK Collect has close to 400,000 lines of code and our core libraries have maybe about 50,000. So it's almost half a million lines of code. It seems a simple application, but it's really complicated. Um, and so that's, there's a lot of work that's required to move ODK to iOS. And the reality is that most of our data collectors don't have iOS devices. What we have done is that we've made our web forms, uh, thanks to uh, Martin from Enketo, uh, more um, web forms are getting better and better. So today you can collect data offline on iOS using uh, Safari and we'll likely continue to sort of invest in that. Um, if somebody in the community wants to build an iOS client, they're more than welcome to. In fact, you know, I, I use a Mac, I have iOS, um, um, but it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money. Uh, and so if you have, you know, it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars to build. So yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, another question, I think this is also quite um, really from, from the experience using in the field. Um, is there an easy way to mix kind of paper-based data collection and ODK-based mobile phone collection and kind of merge the information together without losing any of the like geolocation and some of the data already captured in mobile? So, yeah, I guess it's a little bit of kind of extreme environment. I think you could get into the situation, you lose the battery or something like that happen and then you have to bring it together. 
Yeah, I think the solution to that's a good question. The solution to that problem is that uh, when you lose the battery, the survey should be sort of robust. The digital survey should should not lose any data. And so um, it's very, you know, it's unusual. We don't know of many instances where people have lost data, either their phone crashed or they ran out of battery. Um, ODK is very robust um, in that way. Um, so, uh, so that's my sort of first answer. My second answer is that there is a way you can combine the two as far as and we've seen this, it's like somebody collects data on paper and you know, you either have barcoded sheets of paper, you can scan that barcode and link it to the sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. Then you can write whatever you want on that sheet of paper. You can even take a picture of that sheet of paper and that becomes part of the record. And then those two things are linked. Um, so that's how I would do it um, is by, you know, uniquely identifying the sheet of paper, taking pictures uh, and then scanning that paper as part of the, the data entry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that should work. Um, yeah, on, another question, I think this also had in the back of my mind, uh, does ODK has functionality to access the local files inside of phone's memory uh, other than the ODK folder? I, I know there is a little bit of tension between Android kind of developers uh, as a platform OS developers and also app developers, how much accessibility you can get through uh, API. So can you walk us through a little bit what's allowed or what's not probably feasible uh, and yeah, accessing local Yeah, that's files. A, a really good question also. All these are really good questions. Um, so yes, we have a file upload widget, um, which means that anything on the file system, you should be able to sort of access um, anything that Android lets us access, you can access and you can upload that file. So that exists today and it works today, but you're correct in that um, uh, uh, Play Store and, and Android are, are locking down things um, more and more. Um, maybe I can tell a little story. In um, a few, uh, in October um, of, of two years ago, we got news from, from Google that they were, um, uh, we could not send background GPSs anymore um, and that they wanted us to remove that feature um, from the from the application and um, you know I tweeted about it I was very upset because a lot of our users rely on that functionality we had just spent a ton of money adding it and it was a critical feature and I um, I think this is something that folks don't understand is that people think that there's an enormous team working on ODK but there isn't you know our mobile app the one that you know, owner uses the one that Kobo uses, the one that has some 3,000 copies on GitHub, the one that runs on this, these 13,000 different devices. You know, it's primarily maintained by one person, uh, our CTO, Ellen Martin. And, you know, mm -hmm. at that time, she had a one-year-old, uh, and the rule change happened in October right before the holiday break, and there are hundreds of thousands of people who are using this app for critical work. Um, and so, you know, no funder has a line item for Play Store compliance. And so it's just a lot of personal sacrifice that has to happen to address these kinds of issues. Uh, it's not uncommon for open source projects to have to do these kinds of things. Um, and ultimately, it's not Google's fault here. Uh, these platforms are very unsafe for users. Um, and so Google is making these changes to keep the, the, the ecosystem safe. And ultimately, as pro a project leader, it's my responsibility to sort of find ways for us to navigate those challenges and um, make it work for people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I yeah, fully understand. Actually, one of the reasons we are having this this webinar and having more and more interaction with you and ODK team is that we, I, we always, I personally always have the feeling like we, we owe you something, like we are using it so oh, yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but we, we never really had this kind of opportunity to get back to you directly. Uh, if something broke and, and like uh, didn't quite work, uh, we, we should have get in touch with you and do something together. But I think we, we haven't quite done that proactively. Uh, we, we try to just work it out on our side, but yeah, we, we hope to develop this, you know, stronger relationship bet between your development team and our users and our researchers to yeah, sort out this kind of issues together. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Yahoo, sorry. And, and you know, that's precisely, you know, kind of led to, to a comment that I have here on the on the chat box. And mm -hmm. and it is related, you know, how can the people contribute to this, right? It's like you said before that you have a team, right? But what, what's, what's the right channel? I mean, I've seen that there are many people that want to to help <laughs> with all of this. It's like, and, and they, don't, they don't know exactly yeah. what's the channel yeah, to yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a... Uh, um... Uh, I think that would get asked a lot. If you had asked me five years ago, I would have said 10 years ago, I said like, well, let's just, let's just show up. Let's just help, help us write some code and make it happen. Um, so that's not a very realistic thing um, for open source projects. So I would say that there's really three ways that everyone can contribute. 
The first is that you should use ODK Cloud um, because the reality is that if you're using ODK for something and you have sort of budget, um, that budget going to the core team helps us make ODK better. So that's the first thing is that using ODK Cloud helps ODK continue. The second thing is, is your advocacy. So you should just tell people about ODK. We don't have a marketing budget. You know, ODK has spread because people use it, they like it, they tell others about it. And so that's something that's very a low bar that you can you, you can you can sort of jump and help tell people about ODK. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is that you should just sign up on the forum and introduce yourself and participate. And participation is really important um, because oftentimes I'm out on the field. This is pre-pandemic. I'm out on the field. I'm watching a user fill out forms, and there's like they're hitting the wrong button or the thing isn't working the, the way they want, and they're just suffering in silence. And to me, that's not acceptable. We cannot know what the problems are if you do not complain that there are problems. And so yeah. please report the bugs that you find on the forum, give us feedback on betas, give us feedback on, on user requests, engage in the process, help us translate the apps. Those are things that you don't have to be a programmer to do. You just have to want, have to, have to participate. And, you know, we have, like I said, you know, millions of users, I would say, you know, we have about, you know, 14,000 on the forum and only like, you know, uh, of those, maybe like a hundred are, are deeply engaged. And so that's a huge drop off. So really use ODK cloud, tell people about ODK and, and join the forum, participate, offer feedback. Those are huge, huge contributions that you can make. I mean, obviously if you're a programmer, yes, join the, the GitHub and, and help us sling some code. But for everybody else, those are the three things you should do. Yeah, it seems like, you know, we didn't know about this ODK cloud which, you yeah. know, I, I'm just having some comments from, from some people and they're so happy to know about it. Yeah. So it yeah. seems like, you know, you, you're basically setting up the, the right channels and the right way to do it. Thank you very much for that, Yo. Um, yeah, just, just following on that uh, a little bit. So yeah, uh, yeah, you, you briefly touched upon Kobo and uh, Kobo Toolbox and Ona as a kind of ODK rooted tools yeah. out there, uh, ODK family uh, per se. Yeah. Um, so how are they connected to the root of ODK? Um, and are you kind of in good relationship with those tools? We hate, and we hate everybody. <laughs> No, so there are, it's, there are maybe, you know, as of today, there's like something like 3,000 forks, 3,000 forks mm -hmm. or, or copies of the mobile app alone on GitHub. Um, and that is in many ways sort of the challenge of success because we want to let a thousand flowers bloom, but we also want to make sure that people are using the, the most current versions and stuff like that. So Kobo, Ona, Comcare, and Keto, Survey123, Nemo, and lots of others in the space are sort of direct beneficiaries of ODK's code base. Um, and we benefit from their work as well, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, there are sort of data collection platforms before ODK and there will be data collection platforms after ODK. And so for me, I find it's not super helpful to pay close attention to what other people are doing. You know, we have a long list of problems that we need to solve for ODK's users. And um, I'm always looking for collaborative ways to do that work. And if there's alignment, great. If not, that's fine too. As far as your specific question about the ODK ecosystem, I would say that it's friendly competition, um, mm -hmm. but there are sort of major differences. So, you know, for example, at ODK, we offer these private cloud servers for organizations, as opposed to maybe uh, uh, others who have like a one big shared server um, with quotas. And so if you're unhappy with our offering, you can actually self-host. Um, you can't really self-host ONA or Kobo without a lot of technical work. Um, I think we offer really fast, thoughtful, guaranteed support on all user issues, really fast. Um, and I think you also find that the people who work on ODK are like really nice. Um, you don't put that in the marketing or whatever. It's not something that people work optimize for, but we really value that and we think that's important. Uh, we offer consulting and implementation services, which others don't. And then we have a really large and friendly uh, community. Uh, Kobo and Ona both sit on our technical advisory board um, and in Keto has in the past. And so we, we have a close relationship with all the open source partners. And our goal is just to make sure that we are across all the platforms, we're staying compatible and doing what's best for users. Um, but I would say that it's a friendly competition. I talked to Matt and, and Tino. Um, we talk to the Comcare folks all the time. Um, and yeah. so we're, we're friendly. It's a big market. There's no need for us to fight over things. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, okay, so I, I think we, we got also some technical questions here and oh there. Uh, yeah, I think we it. can just yeah quickly go through some of them. Uh, GNSS, uh, so 
yeah, another you know, location, I guess, a location data source. Um, is there a plan to support that? Uh, I don't uh, think so. Uh, well, okay. One is that I'm not 100% sure. Essentially, we do whatever the Android system supports. So mm -hmm, there's nothing mm -hmm. special in ODK that, that does that. There's two ways of doing that. If Android supports it or if you can connect to it over Bluetooth, then yes, we can provide support because it's built in. Outside of that, you can also build an external application and ODK will talk to that external application and that ex external applications can do it. So if you're interested in GNSS and you can find funding for somebody to build a standalone app, we'll gladly connect to it. Um, and flat file structure versus relational database, kind of embedded relational database structure. Um, is, is, is there only already option to bring data from relational database? Uh, so currently, um, we uh, ODK aggregate the old server was very relational in how it stored data. ODK Central is not. We just sort of take the submissions as they are and we make it available for people to do um, whatever. Um, one option that we always hear about people want is being able to pull in data from other data sources as part of the ODK form. That's something that we hear a lot, linked data sets and being able to connect to external databases. <laughs> it's something that we're working on. We have, you know, a vision for, mm. but there's no current ETA. Um, mm, yeah, it, right. Okay. Um, and the data transfer between Central ODK Central and ODK Collect. Um, so, yeah, can you say something about that? Yeah, so historically, you know, ONA, Kobo, ODK servers have used something called the Open Rosa API, and that's an API that's existed mm -hmm. since 2008. It's very old and creaky. Um, ODK Central has an, uh, still uses that API, but has a, a RESTful new API that uh, folks can use and will eventually be switching to. So um, that transfer is done over Wi-Fi or so, or just, you know, TCP, um, and it's a very rich and powerful API that you can, you can connect to. Um, hopefully that answers that question. Okay, so that's possible. Okay, yeah, that's already working. Good. Okay. Um, and I, I think there are several questions around this GeoShape feature, which looks great. I think that has a lot of applications, uh, possibilities in agriculture as well. But I think at the same time, there's a little bit of concern. Does that mean now we need internet connectivity to download the map tiles? And how, how do we handle map tiles? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so um, you do not need um, uh, internet connectivity for the map. Well, certainly you don't need internet connectivity for GPS because GPS is separate from that. Oftentimes people get confused. Um, as far as the tiles themselves, ODK supports a, a bunch of different base maps, Google, Mapbox, uh, Cardo, DB, and a bunch of these things. So um, you can pick whatever base map works for you. If you're using the OpenStreetMap ones, those cache and are offlineable. Um, in addition to that, you can also put your own layers you can download MB tiles and you can put those layers on the device. Um, we support both raster and vector uh, images. Um, so yeah, there's no reason to worry. Um, at ODK, we love offline. So um, we're never gonna yeah. abandon you and, and require internet connection for, for the mapping. You can put as many um, offline tiles uh, on the device as, as you want. Mm. Okay, great, thanks. Um, yeah, uh, Daniel, do, do you have some more questions from your side? Well, I mean, if, if you're done with the, with the technical, I, I like to ask more uh, a couple of questions, you know, um, from the more inspirational point of view, oh, if I'm okay. allowed. Let's, yes, please, <laughs> okay. I insist. Let's get inspirational. <laughs> okay, so I mean, when, when you developed the first version of ODK, ODK yeah. is like, did you imagine how widely your tool will be used in ten years? Um, I mean, obviously not. I'm not a visionary of some sort. You know, ODK <laughs> was my PhD, PhD advisor's Gaetano Borrello's idea. And when he and Carl, my co-founder, um, on UK pitched me on the idea, I thought it wasn't that great of an idea, to be honest. And so it, it goes to show you how little um, I, I actually know. You know, I think a lot of the things that we've done on this project are pretty hard. You know, it's hard to build open source software. Uh, it's hard to have global impact. And we've, it's hard to do that for as long as we have. And um, we've put in a lot of effort, but it's really been a team and a community effort. And we've been really lucky. Um, I should note that, and I don't take any of this stuff for granted, um, the reach that ODK has. Uh, Gaetano, Gaetano was diagnosed with cancer right when we started the project in 2008. He passed away in 2015. And so for me, ODK is part of his legacy. And so between that and the number of people who depend on ODK, who use it for critical work, you know, I, I take the project, you know, I'm a, I'm a laughy, jokey kind of guy, but I take the project very seriously um, because we didn't know that it was going to be this big. Um, and our stewardship of it, how we maintain the culture, how we keep it evolving. Um, you know, that's what I spend most of my time thinking about um, because we we don't, we want ODK to be around. Uh, it's been around for 12 years. We want to be around for another, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. We're in it for the long term. 
Oh, Daniel, I think you're muted. Yeah, okay, and just the, sec the second question. Like, yeah. when was the moment you realized that you kind of made it and created something big? Have we made it? Have we made it? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember it very well um, because it was May 2011. I got an email from an organization called Vest Vestigrad Franzden. Um, these were folks who were delivering, they were uh, handing out uh, water filtration devices and, and cook stoves in, in Kenya. And they emailed me and they said they had found ODK by themselves. They deployed it to, uh, to 4,000 community health workers in Kenya, and they were collecting 40,000 records a day. And I, you know, I'm very responsive on email and I hopped on email. I was like, 4,000, did you mean 40 or 400? And they said, no, 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 it was 4,000. We just found it, we downloaded it, it's been working great. Um, and it blew my mind because here, you know, the idea that you put software out there, you don't know if it's going to work for folks and they can find it, they can find success with it. It's been really cool. And that project is extra cool because it turns out one of their, their sponsors was an astronaut. And so this astronaut was using ODK on the space station, which is, you know, it ties into the Star Wars and Star Trek thing. Um, so ODK is maybe the only data collection platform that's been used in space. So that's pretty cool. Okay, come on. I mean, if you wanted to, to get inspiration from this, it's like, come on. I mean, thank you. Thank you very much for, for your answer, yo. Uh, yeah. Yahoo, so do you have any more questions or comments? Yeah, so relatively, I mean, this, this has been really community-driven project. So uh, yesterday, I just randomly searched ODK on my YouTube. And yeah, I got pages of pages of instructional video, like recording from workshops, etc. But none of them was from you. Uh, none of them features you, Yao. <laughs> it's all <Yeah>. community-contributed <laughs> content. And yeah. how, how did you make it happen? I, I, I know, I mean, the, the tool itself, it, has, uh, it speaks about the success of this tool and how easy it is to use and the wide distribution of the tool. But in the community level, do you pay like special attention to community management and following up the community? Is there anything, any secret <laughs> that you have yeah, on how to um, build this community and work? Yeah, we have a really great community um, and uh, a, a kind and, and thoughtful one. And I, I think it's the culture. So when we started ODK, if you look through the, our mailing list from 2008, you will notice that when people send emails to the mailing lists back in the day, you'd get a response in under an hour or two. And somebody, usually me, who is really committed to helping be, people be successful. And so that's been the culture of ODK from day one. And I think people respect that. You know, there's projects out there. I, you know, if you send an email to Esri, I hate to throw Esri on the bus. If you send an email to Esri, you're not going to get a response in under an hour, typically. And that response won't be from the person who's running Esri. And so we have a really flat organization and everybody's really committed um, to social impact and, 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 and making that great for folks. And so ultimately, I think that's what it is, is that we are you know, passionate about this stuff. We're really responsive. Um, and yeah, I do spend a ton of time on community management. Again, I think from the mailing list, something like a one quarter of all the messages are from me. So I love it. I, I love community building, community management and, um, to me, it's it's sort of like it's like building a it's like having a dinner party uh, for millions of people, you know. So, yeah, we love our community. We think that's how the project spreads, and and the way that we do that is be, by being kind and thoughtful, and really being responsive to people's needs. And I think if you do that every day for twelve years, you know, you get some traction. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's truly inspiring. Uh, so one of the questions just came in uh, is asking, sometimes it's, it's difficult to design good questions and good surveys. And yeah, there has been a lot of questions and surveys already developed by others and successfully used. So is there some community level or some kind of, I don't know, ODK academy or something to help design questionnaire better and asking clearer questions? Yeah, so there's two answers to that. So one is that, um, um, we do want to build some sort of functionality where people can share forms. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, it's been done before. So there used to be a, a server called FormHub built by Columbia University and FormHub mm. eventually became Ona. Uh, ah, and, okay. and so the yeah. Cobol yeah. and Ona products actually derive from, from FormHub. Um, the idea behind FormHub was that you could share forms. Um, so we want to build, that's all sort of dead. Uh, we want to build an easier way for people to share forms. 
Um, as far as how to how to build great forms, you know, that's why we have a forum so people can ask these questions and learn from each other. Um, we don't have a, an academy like DHIS2, but we do offer training as part of some of our cloud hosting plans. And the idea here is that we want to help people with sort of those best practices. Ultimately, academies and these kinds of things are not sustainable in the sense that um, we want the software to help you do the right thing without having an academy. Like there's no Zoom academy, right? It's just like you log onto Zoom, it helps you do the right things, and then it's working. So we want to do the same thing with ODK, sort of guide people to asking high quality questions. Um, and, you know, we're hoping to, to have more to announce on that soon. Great. Um, there was a... Actually, yeah, there's a couple of questions from yeah, our colleagues you know, within CGI. Uh, let's try the Google, uh, Google, Google the ODK, ODK Cloud, cloud yeah. ODK Cloud uh, together. So yeah, definitely, I, I hear you, everyone. I think, yeah, let, let's do it. I mean, let's try it out and let's start using it. So yeah, I will follow up with uh, yeah, and uh, ODK people and maybe set up our own account or ODK Cloud and yeah, start using it. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's something, yeah, as Daniel said, uh, we haven't really realized that it's been already being developed and ready to go, so I think we should. Yeah, we're working. We've been working hard in the background. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it was yeah. just announced in October, so you know, oh, not okay. everybody knows about it. Okay, great. Um, yeah, there is another kind of techy question uh, on kind of using ontologies and data standard um, that linking with questions and the data we are collecting. And so, if, if there's some kind of uh, effort bringing to data standard into ODK survey design um, and data processing. Yeah, not uh, because we are we try to be a flexible data collection platform. We don't have sort of a set ontology that folks can use. What I can say is that um, within ODK, there's a the ability for each question to have a set of properties that are not sort of exposed to the user, and so you can put keywords and IDs of, of ontologies there. And that gets passed through and can use that for processing. So for example, if you're using for sort of ODK for medical record systems, you can put, uh, for those who know OpenMRS, you can put OpenMRS concepts inside uh, ODK and it'll pass it all through. So there's ways to do that. Um, now, you know, you can just add properties uh, and those can be used in, in your data processing. Okay. Um, and there was a question about ODKX, and actually, I, I don't know much about it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about ODKX? Is that the yeah. future of ODK? It, it is. Um, well, I, I don't think it's the, the future of ODK. Um, so um, ODKX, uh, it was formerly called ODK2, uh, came out of the same research group at the University of Washington, and that's why they share the, a share name. Um, they are run by separate teams, and the systems are mm. largely incompatible. Um, oh. The install base is also very different. So um, ODK is pretty much everywhere at this point. Um, it's, it's literally, it's kind of wild. ODK is, is literally used in every country in the world, um, which is pretty wild. Um, and ODKX is much is very early, early in its growth cycle. So I would say that if you are highly technical and you're interested in building custom JavaScript apps to sort of gather, manage, and visualize data on device, then ODKX is likely a good fit for you. And you should check out their, their website um, at odk-x.org and their form. But they really are sort of separate projects. They just share a name because we, we come from the same place. Okay, great. So we have one minute left already. Um, so oh, wow. uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, so I would like to give you a chance to ask a question or final remark to uh, our colleague connecting from agriculture background and doing agriculture research. Um, do, do, do you have anything you'd like to kind of tell us? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. Th there's a, a couple of things. First is that uh, I really hope that we can save some of the Q&A uh, mm -hmm. questions. Um, and if we can off offline, and I will, I promise that I will answer every Q&A question that has been answered if I have access to the chat. So yeah. I'll spend some time yes. doing that. So, um, and if you don't get your question answered, my email address, just Google me. I'm extremely easy to find and send me a question. So yeah. the, my comment is that for everybody who's on this call, who's used ODK or, or using ODK, deliver, I want to thank you um, for being a part of, of ODK. ODK only exists because people use the software and find success with it. Um, and it really is a community project. We've come very far together. Uh, and um, I thank you for that. And I'm excited about what we can accomplish together in the future. Then the last thing I've sort of said is that if there is anything that I can do or the ODK can do, the team can do to help you on your journey, um, please, 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 please do not hesitate to reach out to me, uh, to email me. 
My email address is yanakwa, first initial, last name at getodk.org. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on LinkedIn. However you want to reach me, send me a message. Um, I respond to every email and I am, I'm glad to help you um, be successful. So don't be shy. So yeah, that's all I want to say really. Awesome, great, thanks. Um, uh, Daniel, uh, so any final kind of remark from you? Yeah, I mean, th thanks, Yao, for sharing, I mean, such a great live demo uh, for your time also to be keen to wake up that early for you for this webinar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> was, it's super was not early, only, yeah. <laughs> was not only great presentation, but also the answers. And I mean, you have this like contagious attitude <laughs> that was also <laughs> inspirational, not only the answers. And, and thank you, thanks to all of you, to all the attendees. We hope that you enjoyed this webinar as much as we did. Um, for the community of practice on data driven agronomy, this would be like the last uh, webinar that we are going to co-organize this year. And, and don't forget, the next year we would work on on the on the extent on the topic that we that has been chosen on the extension agent of the future. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank to all of you. And I don't know if you have um, so, uh, Yahoo some. Yes, so the, the, right, and so the only thing I'd like to add is the recording. Yeah, actually, a couple of people asked already. The recording of this webinar will be available on the YouTube channel or Big Data Platform next week. And yeah, I, I will share all the chat questions and Q&A questions with you. So we will follow up maybe offline. Or yeah, you can follow up directly with you uh, on those questions that we might not have uh, had the chance to follow up to. Yeah, and I will, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll answer thank all of those, promise. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much, and th thanks everyone again. Uh, have a good rest of the day. Um, or good night. Okay, bye. Okay. Yeah.